Good morning, my name is Jorge Sobron. I will be um, commenting on a few of the slides of this uh, conference. We are going to be talking about how to measure overlap in, in models of niches. Uh, and there are several ways of doing this. Um, there is a, the possibility of doing it on geographical space if you project the niche models and geography to get some idea of the potential distribution of a species, or you can do it on a niche space. And that requires that you decide how many dimensions and what variables and things like that. Uh, in this conference, we are basically going to talk about distributions in niche space. This is simply another example of how uh, you can do uh, things in, in geographical space or in niche space. This idea that there is a, a, a relationship between geography and niche space is called Hutchinson's duality. So you see the niche in the, the right side of the figure, the niche of a flying squirrel, and you can see that projected in geography in the purple areas in the map. Uh, to do this representation, we first um, gridded the, the, the map in discrete cells and there is one cell in the map for every cell in each space. The idea that we can uh, impose a discrete uh, grid on geographic or niche space is a very important one, it's very useful because it allows you to use uh, geographical information systems or many versions of the R uh, environment in order to represent uh, niche space. Uh, the other thing that you need to, to know is that often when you model a niche, you are modeling using a continuous shape. For instance, the Maxent models a Gibbs probability, which is a continuous uh, shape in the space of several variables. Here we are looking at just two. And um, you need to know what is inside or outside. But if it, the shape is continuous, you cannot do that unless you um, somehow define a border um, in, 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 in the figure you see the black points and the red points, which assume that they are different species, and uh, you, you can see the borders that you can trace. Uh, those are um, uh, contour levels for the, for the continuous form. Deciding whether, by, first by, 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 by agreeing on a threshold that will allow you to do a, a, um, a border for the niche models and then deciding what is inside or outside is the trick, the main trick be, uh, behind quite a few of the, of, the, of the algorithms that we will see that allow you to uh, estimate the overlap between two niches. Hi, this is Marlon and I'm going to continue presenting the slides in this talk. After reviewing some terms that Jorge was uh, talking about, we're going to see the different terminology uh, that is used in the world of measuring niche overlap. In general, they are different terms but with very similar concepts. For instance, uh, overlap and intersection, uh, they basically mean the same thing. And it's basically how much one niche is on top or it's covering the same space than the other. And the two basic ideas behind all the metrics that we're going to see later uh, is shape and location. So in this slide you have here summarized different metrics that you can find. For instance, overlap and intersection that I just mentioned. Uh, but you also have similarity and proximity. And similarity is how 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 alike these two niches or these two shapes are, and it doesn't necessarily consider uh, where they are, in which space they are, if they are far or they are close, uh, but some metrics do consider that further uh, additionally or 
than just considering similarity. So the other one is proximity, which basically is uh, the inverse of the distance. And there are different ways to measure distance from one niche to another, uh, but uh, most of the techniques that are out there uh, have considered the distance between the centroids of the niches in general. You can also consider other types of distances, but we'll see in the next slides some of the methods that we have summarized here. Among the existing methods uh, and software that exists already, we're going to mention at least four of them, but uh, they are not all. You can go ahead and search on the internet. For sure, you're going to find more options. These are at least the most uh, well known in the field right now. So let's start with ENM tools, uh, which initially started as a user uh, visual interface program, but right now it's an R package as well. So you can use it uh, with all its tools in the R environment. And it's, uh, I mentioned it first because this program started uh, one of the main things about comparing niches, uh, which is uh, using distinct metrics based on distinct hypotheses. For instance, similarity, which it's uh, more or less used the same as overlap, and identity, which is also called equivalency of niches. So in this program, you are comparing models of ecological niche. Uh, and depending on the algorithm you use, you may find different answers, but it's worth to explore at least the models that you consider are the best for your question. Uh, this program uh, was, or this set of methods were started by uh, Warren and colleagues in 2008. And among the metrics that they present there, uh, we have identity test, the background similarity test, which is uh, one of the innovations that they presented here. And this background similarity test right now has two options, one that is asymmetric and the other one that is symmetric. Uh, I'll talk about that in a bit. I just wanted to explain what the background test is about. Uh, one of the good things about uh, this innovation that I was talking about is that they presented uh, the idea of measuring whether the overlap is statistically significant or not, basically comparing the actual niches against uh, random or uh, let's call it artificial niches that you can reconstruct based on uh, choosing randomly points from the background of one species and the other. So the asymmetric similarity test basically compares one of the niches against niches that you can reconstruct from the background of the other, and then you have to do it the other way around. And then the symmetric background, I think uh, from what I understood in the method is that they create random niches for each of the species in their respective backgrounds and then compare them all and see how that comparison looks like against the one that is the observed between the two niches. Now, uh, the other test that they presented is the identity test, which basically allows you to calculate how uh, similar, not similar, but whether these niches are identical or not. And the idea that they proposed was to mix all the records from the two species and then uh, pick random points for one species and random points for the other species and then compare uh, those niches that you can reconstruct based on those random points for each of the species. 
and at the end you end up with a metric in which you can compare the observed value again against the one that you can obtain from this randomization process. So uh, that was one of the main innovations of this tool and I think most of the other tools that we're going to see later have been using these ideas later on. Um, the other thing I want to talk about this program is that they right now they have uh, another option initially they started doing comparisons in geographic space only but uh, I recently read that they are doing comparisons in the environmental space as well uh, and they are using an n-dimensional space for doing such comparisons so you, you may want to take a look at that program but again this program is using uh, models of ecological niche to compare those niches the other main software that i wanted to talk about and also methods uh, is are the ones that are in ecospad ecospad is an r package which is based on a series of uh, theoretical background points and experiences that uh, these authors have been accumulating when they were comparing niches from native and invasive uh, records of species and I think they presented a, a very good uh, set of ideas in this software and this set of methods and I'm going to talk about them after telling you that the metrics that they use are similarity and identity again uh, similarity is often uh, called overlap in their approach and identity is the equivalency just uh, perhaps I didn't mention before, but the difference between similarity and identity as proposed by the initial authors is that identity measures how similar two niches look like and equivalency is more a test of uh, whether this niche is the same as the other. Uh, so the ideas behind them are a little bit different. Uh, and the approach is also a little bit different when you are doing it. So the main difference from this uh, software compared to the previous one is that they use, uh, they do comparisons in, in environmental space. And this environmental space, it's a two dimensional space. So you can use temperature or precipitation or two other two set, uh, other sets of variables of two variables only and they can be also principal components of your variables and the ideas that I liked a lot in their approach is that they recognize that the differences in, in niches that you can be looking at uh, so you have the fundamental niche there then you have the realized niche which is the niche that is used by the species because of uh, other uh, things that have been uh, restricting the species for using the whole fundamental niche for instance uh, the availability of environment which is like saying talking about the existing fundamental niche uh, but also accessibility because the realized niche is restricted by how much of that fundamental niche the species can actually access and then you have uh, the niches that are part of the fundamental niche but are not accessible they are uh, called also invadable niches uh, or spaces of the niche and they are here in red uh, and so those ideas behind this this uh, initial uh, proposition of methods or metrics are, are interesting uh, these authors or this method uses kernels to represent niches so these kernels are constructed based on actual records of the species and therefore they kind of look like more the realized niche rather than the fundamental niche and that's something you have to consider when you're 
doing or using this metric. This is this is one of the figures they use for presenting the the software, and I like that because uh, you can see the kernels that they use for representing the niches, and also. Uh, well, although I don't have the legend here, you can see in different colors what is the uh, suitable niche for or, or the niche of the, the native range of the species or the native niche as they call it here, the invasive niche. You see where they two overlap. You see uh, where it's just one, where is the other. They also have some ways to represent what is the uh, available space of the niche comparison because uh, remember they they are kind of have an, a hypothesis and this is one of the strengths of this software they use a hypothesis of what is accessible for one species and what's accessible for the other species and they use that that those sets of, of environments to correct for availability for each of the niches or species that you're comparing and then because of that even if you have zero similarity or zero overlap if you don't have backgrounds or accessible environments that look like the other one or that can be overlapped then you don't have a statistical significance or you don't have any clear uh, reasoning to believe that those niches are different and let me say it differently so I can explain myself better. If you have a set of environments that are accessible for one species, that are totally different to a different set of environments that are accessible for the other species or for the uh, in population that in, are in the invaded range, uh, those comparisons are not meaningful. So even though the niches look like they are completely different you are not sure about that because the available environment for those population different populations or different species is not comparable the other uh, set of metrics or software that I wanted to talk about is uh, are contained in the package hyper volume is an R package it was initially presented in 2014 and the, they they have a set of tools but one of the tools that they have is that they uh, it's useful for measuring the intersection of two hypervolumes and what are these two hypervolumes are kernels of more than two dimensions of points or of more kernels that are based on points in a multi-dimensional space in environmental space so the overlap is how much these two multi-dimensional kernels intersect which is uh, the proportion of intersection uh, divided by the total volume of the two niches so these ideas are interesting in the sense that they are in the environmental space and they are also in more than two dimensions with, which sometimes could be useful but of course uh, the limitations is that uh, the more uh, dimensions you have the more complex the analysis becomes because of the kernels because they are trying to follow the distribution of points in the in the dimensions that you're using so it can it could get very complex if you have many dimensions and also it can become very time consuming if you think about it because of the math that is behind uh, calculating these uh, metrics um, this is just a figure that shows you what's the intersection between temperature uh, temperate unique uh, points kind of like they are plotting those uh, records or values separated by tropical and temperate and the intersection that you can obtain from this software is the one that is in 
yellow kind of orange uh, and it's interesting it, the idea it looks really nice but uh, remember that we are talking about niches and you have to be very clear when you're uh, comparing them because you have fundamental niches you have realized niches you have existing fundamental niches and you have to be very clear about what you want to compare when you want to either decide which technique or do interpretation so your results the other uh, method it's actually not a software yet at least to my knowledge uh, it's this based on ellipsoid this was presented in 2000 15 by Swanson and, and colleagues uh, and it's really interesting because it's basically based in the idea of overlap of n-dimensional ellipsoids and these ellipsoids are again models of ecological niche and so and they are convex and they are simpler than other models like Maxen or like GLMs or boosted regression trees that they have a, a a clear idea why they wanted to do that they basically are working with things that are very close to the fundamental niche because these authors work with isotopes with uh, responses to things that they can measure in labs and because of that they uh, and because of the data they have they were uh, they Proposed the ellipsoid as a good model of the fundamental niches or the niches that they are working with. And the idea is basically the same as uh, any intersection metric is calculating the proportion of the total volume occupied by two or more niches. Uh, and then the intersection among niches or between two niches. Is divided by that total volume and basically the comparison can be done two by two uh, and I mean two species by two species and it's the, the idea is is simple in the sense that it's just an intersection of ellipsoids but uh, these authors had uh, a nice idea actually of how to add an amount of not uncertainty but at least variability in the final metric that they calculate and they use the Bayesian approach to uh, define uh, confidence limits for this ellipsoid this ellipsoid at models that they were using and then the, any metric that they calculate in this case the overlap of the ellipsoid can have a confidence limits in things like that uh, and I, I sound kind of excited about this idea because I liked it I like the idea of having simpler representations of niche and especially they are convex because convexity is something that we may always look like uh, look in when we are measuring niches at least thermal niches or humidity niches things like that in the lab uh, this this approach is different than the one that the ones that we saw before because this one is basically done for things that you measure in labs so you don't actually have records from um, from the the field and then variables they, they measure that in the lab and this idea is nice but it's not directly translated to our world in ecological niche modeling and what i'm going the next software i want to talk about is niche a niche a it's a software written in uh, java it's a it's a visual software you can open it and start clicking buttons on it and it has a lot of options and one of those options is the uh, availability of uh, analysis of niche overlap uh, it's an open source software so you can install it and you can find it in the link you're seeing there 
Uh, this software uses also ellipsoids as models of ecological niche. And the particularity of these ellipsoids is that they are minimum volume ellipsoids. So, uh, in they are special minimum volume ellipsoids. They are, uh, if you compare them against the ones that you can obtain in R, these ones are a little bit more uh, strong in the way they reduce their volume so they account for a volume that is closer to all the points that you're using for creating the ellipsoid. Uh, I'm gonna uh, include the the uh, reference to the literature that uh, describes this method and but again this is this is the idea of creating a model that is convex and that represents tolerances that way uh, and there are other options in this package, but the one we're talking about now is the overlap option. It also calculates the overlap as the intersection of ellipsoids. And the way uh, this intersection is presented is as the Jacquard index. Hmm. Among the options that this software has, uh, you can create uh, virtual niches, you can use ellipsoids to characterize points and also you can use uh, convex holes in multi-dimensional space. So uh, I think the most, actually you cannot use more than three dimensions at the time just for visual effect. I'm not totally sure if you can measure the overlap in more than three dimensions but well this is a, an improvement because uh, the previous method didn't account for like geographic availability of environments or the availability of environments for a species. And this one, those with that cloud of points you can see there. So this one is a little bit more uh, thinking about our problems, our, our kind of ecological niches reconstructed from occurrences and available environments. Perhaps it's also important to mention that the software gives you the measure of overlap as uh, the previous one and also as uh, the hypervolume uh, approach. But the hypervolume approach and this one, they do not give you measure of variability or measure of statistical significance of the overlap value and something that does give you uh, ENM tools and also uh, ECOSPED in their analysis. So this and next is uh, a new method that we uh, have been working on Jorge, Town, Luis, Osorio and I. Uh, recently only, and we have created this package, ellipsenm. The basic idea is that we want to model ecological niches as ellipsoids, but we wanted to uh, add a little bit more of complexity, at least, uh, or options to explore niches in this package. One of the many options that this package have, has is the uh, option to measure niche overlap. And it's, very similar to what you just saw, it's the intersection of two n-dimensional ellipsoids. Uh, and uh, the difference, the main, the main difference between this and the previous one is uh, that this considers the availability of environments. And that's very important because of what we have been discussing about when we talk about fundamental niche, realized niche. Uh, available environments and uh, existent niche. So again, compares to this this software compares two models of ecological niche, and the niches are modeled as ellipsoids. We are still working in adding more options of distinct types of ellipsoids, and uh, eventually we will have this package totally complete and 
basically right now there are two options of what type of ellipsoids one is the normal ellipsoid based on uh, a centroid and the covariance matrix and then also a minimum volume ellipsoid uh, in which the main idea is to reduce the volume of the niche based on a better approach to exclude uh, environmental outlayers or extreme values so the two options that you have in this package are measuring full overlap which assumes that the whole ellipsoid is uh, the fundamental niche of the species and you compare those two niches and do the same thing that you did before with the other package and you have uh, a measure of intersection or overlap between these two ellipsoids but again the available environment in the in this case is the whole thing the whole uh, set of potential values that you can have in the dimensions that you're working with but as we know in our field that doesn't happen uh, we always we are always restricted by the availability of environments and we know that in the earth at least right now we don't have all potential values of temperatures or humidities or any other variable that we can measure so this other type of overlap the background overlap considers the available environment for each species so each species is going to have a set of points of occurrence records a set of environments that are accessible for the species and even though the ellipsoids right now in the way we in the options we have right now are not calibrated based on points and environment and accessible environment uh, environments but only based on environments that are used by the species this idea of considering available environments is very important when we're measure when, when we're uh, looking at answers about whether this overlap that we see of these two ellipsoids is statistically significant or not and also it has a lot to do in the way we measure the overlap because you are comparing what's the overlap of these two ellipsoids but based only in the volume that is actually accessible for the two species so the values from full overlap to background overlap can be very different especially if you have available environments like the ones you are seeing here in this example just to give you an idea of why available environments matter you have this animation uh, in in the first panel you have how the two niches look like they look like they overlap right uh, but if you measure the complete overlap that's not the, it's not going to give you a clear idea of what's actually happening because the available environment for the red niche is the one that you see in the second panel and the available environment for the B niche it's the one that you see in the other panel and they look different so once you combine them you have a set of values that are relevant for comparisons of your niches and that's what we do in this new method <clears throat> and then then we proceed to do other calculations but before that I just wanted to show you this and tell you that uh, the way we characterize we characterize niches matters a lot it's not the same to use a GLM than an ellipsoid well depending on the on the uh, response types that you use it's not the same to use a, a GLM than a boosted regression tree it's not the same to use an ellipsoid than to use a, a kernel density of points all of them have different implications in your analysis and all of them have uh, different ideas behind them so you have to be very careful when choosing what's the model of your niche so in this case we're looking at two distinct models one is a normal covariance the first one here in the left is a normal ellipsoid 
based on the centroid and convergence matrix of the point. And then the second one is the they are two ellipsoids based on uh, an approach that tries to minimize the volume contained by the uh, ellipsoids, but basically covering the same amount of points. And the overlap in the first example looks like evident. Let me just put it in. And the, the overlap in the second example doesn't look that good. And when you do the calculations of statistical, statistical significance, you get from the first example that you have a, a, a value that doesn't allow you to reject the hypothesis of overlap. And with the second uh, case, you have a value that uh, is statistically significant. Therefore, the overlap is rejected. And let me explain to you later how these calculations are done. But basically, I wanted to show you that how you characterize ecological niches matters a lot in the final answer that you're going to find. So uh, this is just a representation of what you can see in E space and G space, geographic and environmental space from these methods we have implemented. And the new hypothesis when you're doing a statistical significant test with this uh, method is that the two niches overlap. And then to reject the null hypothesis, you have to find an observed value that is uh, as extreme or more extreme than the lower 95% confidence interval or confidence limit. And how do you calculate this uh, confidence limit or interval? Well, in this case, what we do in this specific approach is to do something very similar to what the uh, background similarity test does in uh, the Warren's example in ENM tools, but the, the symmetric example in which we randomly pick points from the available environment for one species, the same number that, uh, that we have points for. And we do the same thing for the other species, randomly pick points from the background available for that species, and then compare those two uh, ellipses that are reconstructed based on those values, and do that a thousand or 500 times. And then, you have these distributions of overlap values based on random uh, runnings, and you compare that with your observed value. If your observed value is below that lower confidence limit, then you're, you're sure that your observed overlap is statistically significant. Uh, so that means that you can reject the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is that the niches overlap. And I know it can be a little confusing, but with that, I want to finish. And thank you all, and thanks, Tom and Luis, that are part of this project. And well, you can find more information about the last project in the link below. And again, thank you very much.